Okay, we are going to continue with assignment two and finishing it off. So where I left off, I had cut out the creature and I had transitioned everything I could. as smoothly as possible, right? And then the major trick that I showed that we'll be uh, using more as we animate, so these are the different components, is that to kind of smooth things over more than just your direct adjustments in color and in, in levels could do, I used the clone stamp tool, this new tool, and I put it all on its own layer so if I turn everything off except for the clone stamp, you can just see where this was used in targeted ways. And it just helps the transitions between certain features. And then of course, I have the gray turned on as a background so that I can see anything that needs to be you know, cut out still. Now, the problem with the clone stamp is it can leave a little bit of a haze around things. So if I make a pure white background, this is a good step at this point. So go to Edit, Fill, White at 100%. I can see that because of the clone stamp, because I use it soft edged, I have a little bit of a gray haze. that isn't really there, but the clone stamp kind of created it. And that might make it difficult if I'm trying to, to bring this creature as a cutout into my landscape or something else. I also noticed that I cut the, the top of the head in kind of a weird spot. And I think I want to cut it down to where that highlight is. So there's always little tweaks that can be made. And so what I'm going to do is first go back to those kind of original compositing skills, just making good selections, cutting things out. And I'm going to use the lasso tool. And I'm going to use a feather of just, let's do one pixel. So I want it pretty sharp but just a little softened. And I'll try taking out a chunk here, just along that highlight edge. I'm kind of wiggling it to match the fur. And because it's a one pixel feather, the more I hit delete, it will just slowly bite away at it. Now that shows me I can maybe get away with a two pixel feather. Let it be a little bit softer. And I'm zoomed in actually at 400%, which is more than I need to. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good le level of feather to get a believable edge on that. So I'm going to zoom out to 300% because this is what the eye, if it really tried, would perceive on a computer screen. And we're working at screen resolution at around 8 by 10 inches or bigger at 150 pixels per inch for high def screens. So standard definition for screens is only 72 pixels per inch. And because of the feather, I can hit delete more and more, and it will keep kind of biting away. And it's a good way for the fur. To be um, acknowledged handled. Now if it was stone or bone or something with with no translucence at all, then I might change that up. It's good to get the big picture every once in a while. I'm going to bite away at this a little into the back. 
selected. And then I need to transition from here. To include the lower part of the skull, you know, kind of this, this jaw rough that I'm including. All right. So there we go. So to, to show you clone stamp, which is quite helpful, and you can overdo it, which is why I always put it on its own layer. I'm going to use this to help transition in the neck area, especially the back and some of these shadows. So the way clone stamp works is it's just like a brush. So you pick a size, and I tend to use medium size about the size of a pencil eraser and I tend to use it really soft because I want to transition so 0% hardness or less than a 20% hardness and then I'm going to use it at 100% opacity to start just so you can see what it does and I'm going to set it under source here for current and below layers and then I'm going to turn off the backgrounds so it doesn't pick up any of the white or gray pixels. Now, if I want the back here to have a little bit more similar coloring and texturing to the head, what I do is I hold down my, my option key or my alt key, and it changes my cursor, my brush cursor to a target, and then I click, and then I can let go, but it's gonna carry that texture that I stole from with me. And then as I paint with it, remember I'm on my clone stamp layer, so I'm not gonna be replacing any pixels that are already there. As I paint with it, it's gonna travel with me and steal from where I was copying from, right? So I can paint some of this texture in onto the shoulder there. And then because it's on its own layer, I can always erase away from it. So I'll use my eraser, I'll make it large and soft at a lower opacity. Just like we've done with so much of our compositing. And then I can use that to transition some of these textures just on the clone stamp layer. And that helps smooth that out, transition it out. Then if I find that's useful, I might start, and I've gotten rid of the hard edges, I might start using clone stamp at a lower opacity. And just roughing some of that in. In the places I don't think the textures quite match. And then I can use my eraser again and just slowly transition it where I think it needs it. And put more in when I need. And this is how you can address, you know, lots of little issues. And it's easy to overdo, which is why I always put it on its own layer, so I can kind of take it back a little bit, like above the eyes, until you're happy with it overall. Okay, now the problem is, because I'm using a soft brush and I'm clone stamping, I can get that little haze. So I'm going to turn off my clone stamp for a second. I'm going to go to my top, you know, asset layer. 
And then I'm going to do that trick that we've done kind of early on where I hold down the option key and I go to layer. First, I'm going to select all the layers I want to show. So I'm going to turn off my little Pokemon guy. I'm going to hold down shift and select all of these components that make up my creature. And then I'm going to go to layer, hold down option and say merge layers. And well that what that will do is give me a combined layer. That combined layer I'm going to mark I'm going to label and maybe mark with a color like green cuz this is the layer where everything's now just there as pixels. And because it was all nicely cut out from, from my um, other sources, this is a really good layer to do dodge and burn to for final touches. So again, for, for dodge and burn, I'm going to use a large brush at a softness with an exposure of less than 30. And I'm going to go in and maybe burn a little bit underneath the arm here. Easy to overdo, so definitely less than 30 for the strength. And you always want to be doing mid-tones. Maybe a little bit under the chin. So this is just for final touches. Because now it's all in one layer. Which makes that nice. Transition between the, the back back end and the tail and then we can do the same thing with dodge to brighten the midtones same kind of settings less than 30 large brush pretty soft you know over it all kind of more generally Okay, now I have my clone stamp layer turned off, right? Which kind of smooths a lot of those transitions over. But it's got that haze around it. So what I'm going to do is use my combined layer and use my magic wand with a contiguous turned off to select the empty space around my combined layer. So I just have kind of a perfect cutout that's very clean of my creature. So I've selected the empty space. Then I can move that empty space onto my clone stamp layer, which might have some softness around it. You see how there's my edge, but then there's pixels, very soft pixels outside of that edge. And then I can just hit delete. And it will sharpen that background so that now, even with clone stamp, it is nice and sharply cut out. So that when I deselect, I have a really, really clean, perfect cutout of my creature on all backgrounds. So that it's very, very versatile. So my finished creature is a combination of my combined layers and then a clone stamp layer on top. And then I want to turn off my background layer so it's just free floating on this grid. And this gives me a really, really versatile, nice, finished character design that I can put into different environments. So to save that, I want to save it as a PSD. And because I labeled it already and put it into assignment two, it's going to update that PSD. So there it is now. And I'm going to save it so I can put it up onto Canvas as a new file type that we haven't used in a while. Not a JPEG, because I don't want it to automatically fill with white, but as a PNG, which will preserve 